On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1975 to take a listen to Bay City Rollers' version of Bye Bye Baby. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. First of all, thank you for all of the messages requesting this video tonight following the sad news that Les McEwen passed away a few days ago. We're going to be taking a look at a lip synced performance from the mid 70s. So I'm not sure how this is going to work on copyrights. If it does get blocked, I'll remove the audio and re-upload it. And there's always a link to this performance video in the description below. So you can click on that link to watch it to see what I'm referring to. I'll also include at the end of the video some of the links for the other Bay City Rollers videos that I've done. There's another analysis but also one that got into their record deal, the management and how they were done over in the industry and being so young they didn't really know what they were signing. But let's get the guys up on screen. We'll have a little look through the song and analyse a few things but it is one hell of a song. Bye bye baby. Let's get into this. If you hate me after all I say I can't put it off Just gotta tell her anyway And there we have it. So, I mean, these guys as a band selling over 120 million albums worldwide. They were one of those bands that were definitely taken advantage of by the people that were in charge of them, manage them and sign them. And this is the kind of band that has so much appeal back in the 70s because of the fact that it's five young guys but singing and performing great songs and this is no exception Bye Bye Baby is one of those compositions that is constantly evolving and it's just over two and a half minutes in length so it's a really short song as a lot of the songs were in the 60s and 70s so we start out with that intro with the spoken word and coming with that chord progression where we're just descending. We'll go through all the chords, we'll get the guitar out in a second. Interestingly, the guitar 
on that original record is very low in the mix. So when they are miming a performance like this, it does seem a little bit at odds with what we're hearing because we've got the piano quite prominent and the guitar not so prominent. So not even having a piano in there, obviously they're just going to perform it as they would perform it live without the lip syncing going on, they would have the guitars out and play the chords. Just mentioning the composition originally written by Bob Crew and Bob Guardio and released by The Four Seasons and Frankie Valley. I do have a video on The Four Seasons and Frankie Valley independently, I believe, on the channel here somewhere if you want to check those out independently. But Interestingly, because of Frankie's vocals, this version that the Bay City Rollers did was a tone lower. And anyone that knows Frankie's singing knows about his head voice and falsetto that he went into. So he had that range that was a lot higher up. This has been brought down, but right at the end of this song, we do have that key change, which then takes it to the beginning key and the start key that we have with the Four Seasons. But it is such a progressive song with so many different elements in there just kicking straight off with a chorus after we've had the spoken intro. So it means that you're just hitting the audience with that full melody straight off the bat. The other differences that we have with this version is a slight increase in tempo. So that's gonna give it a little bit more energy. And I think the hi-hat is a little bit more prominent. It means that things are really driving forward. That was on the original, by the way, but I think it was a little bit lower in the mix. And melodically, this song is just just so catchy, the main vocal is so hooky and we've got all those backing vocals kicking off the whole time of course that we have with the Four Seasons but with these guys performing it we've got that slight increase in energy and also a guitar solo just inserted in there by Eric Faulkner and we have that solo continuing throughout the key change in the background so we do have an extra section just shoehorned in there but fundamentally we've got exactly the same song with a great progression it's just a great song great composition and these guys with the extra energy they put into it and having that approach of more of a band performance than the four seasons i think it was just inevitable that these guys were going to have a huge hit with this song so just in case you want to play this on the guitar i'm going to get into the chords but just quickly a word on les because He's one of those guys that was a great frontman. You can see in this performance the way that not only he, but the whole band engage with the camera. So they had that appreciation of connecting with the audience behind the TV screen. And that is so appealing from any artist when they bring you into the performance across a TV screen, let alone being able to do that live as well. It's important to consider as well the age they were when they had such success because Les would have been in his late teens and having a full year whirlwind of just hits and being so famous, being so well known and having thousands of teenage girls calling out their names and having all of that attention on them. They were really in a bubble and I've heard interviews with Les in the past saying that it was a whirlwind and when that stopped, after those four years, of course, it was such a come down to then realize as well that they didn't have any money, that all of this success they had wasn't reflected in their bank accounts because their bank accounts were controlled by the record label and their management because their manager had control over their bank accounts and they didn't. So all of the money that they did make or were due to make just went missing. And that is something you can watch in the other videos that I've done on the band, exploring those side of things. So just getting into the chords in case you guys want to play this at home. With the spoken intro that we have underneath that, we've got the A minor. <laughs> into an A minor with a major seventh in there. And you can bar that with the first finger, or you can play those notes independently with the first and the second finger on the first fret of the G and the B string, and bring over that third finger, second fret of the D, which will free up your high E string. Uh, we then go into the A minor seventh, into the G, down to an F, E minor, D minor, into a G. And this is where we have that key change straight into the chorus and you're hit with the tagline of the song. We've got the E into the G flat minor in 
into the B. And that's it. And those are your chords for the intro and the chorus, rhythm-wise. You want to keep it along those lines in this performance and on the record. The guitar isn't really high in the mix, so filling out the rhythm, I think the guitar is a little bit more minimal than what we were just playing there with all of those strokes. So we've got this. That kind of approach, just doing one strum, letting it ring out. But if you're just playing this on the guitar by yourself, then you need to fill in more space. So once we've finished that chorus, we then got another key change, which takes us into the verse. So getting to that end of the intro chorus, we then go to a G. And the G then goes into the C. And if I'm applying the rhythm here, you might actually want to throw in a little run up if we've got this. That kind of thing, the G into that C, because I do believe there's a run up there. And we do have a little run up that happens in the pre-chorus from the C. So when you move over to that from the G, if I do that same run up, I'm now playing this C with my third finger and little finger, and then keeping my first finger on that first fret of the B string, so my C up there, because now, got a little run up going on, like that too. And this is why it's important to just change those fingers from the G into this C and not play it with the second and the third here, but the third and the little finger, because it frees up your second finger to throw in this little run that we have that ascends. So we've got this C. We then get into this C augmented shape want to place those in with your first and second finger you can do or you can bar it like I did a second ago but having that again that's gonna free up your high E string if you're playing them independently and then we move into this C sixth shape and then the seventh shape and if you just piece those chords together you'll get the run up in that pre-chorus then into the chorus again which we know already is the E to the G flat minor, into the B. So just a quick word on the guitar solo that's in there as well from Eric Faulkner. We have some relatively straightforward stuff going on and you're gonna to have to resist the temptation to apply vibrato because it's played super straight. So in order to get into the notes, you wanna be in your major pentatonic shape one on the ninth fret, like that. And we are gonna be placing major scale notes into this shape. But starting out, we're having a slide on the B string from seven to nine. So we've got this, that kind of thing. A little bend there. And like I said, super straight, just play the notes. You don't have to apply any stylizations or techniques after you've played the note. And then we have this. Just like that. So it's pretty straightforward. And when the key change then comes in, we've got much the same thing, but just a tone higher. So slide it up a couple of frets. And just so you know the notes that are going on there, pretty much that major pentatonic shape is what we're using, but we do have a little addition to it by placing in the second finger, which like I said, is just gonna be that major scale. So once you start getting used to that major pentatonic shape one, I'm sure you'll be able to find these major scale notes. Like that. And you'll start to be able to throw those in as we have here. 
just giving you a slightly more melodic option and melodic options for playing in that major pentatonic shape one. But thank you guys for requesting this video. I do hope that you've enjoyed it. And it's great to have a look back at the Bay City Rollers here, really at the height of their fame in the mid 70s. And it's the kind of music that Everybody has heard, even if people don't know it's Bay City Rollers, they know a lot of their performances and the songs that they did release at that time. But thank you guys, and I will see you guys at the next one.